Today, the ultimate force meets an immovable object. And no, I'm not talking about these. I'm talking about this. Ooh, thank you. The first Asus Tough laptop to feature AMD's newest mobile Ryzen EPUs. This is the Asus Tough FX505DT. And today, we're gonna see how much of a force this is to be reckoned with. This is one tough piece of a laptop, but before we get into the specs, casual use and gaming performance, battery life design, and more, here's the quick TLDR version. Isus did an astounding job matching the right components to provide you with amazing results at a reasonable price. If you're looking for extreme portability or enthusiast tier hardware, then this product might not satisfy your itch. However, after spending some time with it, it's clear to me that it's designed for those who are looking for practicality and great value with a slight nod towards the emerging gamer within. So for your TLDR types, here's the rest of the information for you. Anyways, let's move on to some specs. You may have noticed this laptop is sporting a brand new AMD Ryzen 7 3750H. This is in fact one of the first 3000 series Ryzen to finally hit the shelves. It houses a four core and eight thread CPU running at 2.3 gigahertz base clock and can turbo all the way up to four gigahertz. But Steve, what is this turbo technology you speak of? Well, third person Steve, AMD turbo core technology is quite different from Intel's turbo boost. Given the right conditions, such as power, draw, and thermals, the 3750H turbo speeds apply to all four physical cores while disabling the four virtual cores. This is very different from Intel's technology, which results in only one to two cores boosting on most Intel CPUs while disabling all virtual cores. Next, we have the 15.6 inch IPS display running at full HD resolution, which is 1920 by 1080 pixels. I'm sensing some uh, gaming genetics coursing through its design aesthetic, as this display is also ready for 120 hz high refresh rate gaming. I must say, it was smart to pair this display with a 4GB GTX 1650 video card, because an integrated GPU just wouldn't do the refresh rate justice. Speaking of which, the new Vega 10 integrated graphics is still a great value here, since it's not fully disabled. It's quite opposite in fact. This laptop automatically detects the graphical workload and assigns the most appropriate GPU for the job. This will help with thermals and battery life. And if you need even more storage, there's a vacant 2.5 inch drive bay for all your additional SSD or hard drive needs. And if I catch any of you putting a hard drive in there, one of those, just get an SSD. It's so affordable right now. Lastly, for specs, out of the box, you get eight gigabytes of RAM running at 2666 megahertz. Mwah! The great news is there's one available slot should you choose to do a RAM upgrade which by the way is easy to access after you remove a few screws from the bottom housing. If you want to learn more about the benefits of two versus one sticks of RAM in your laptop, then check out this video where we reveal some surprising facts about dual channel versus single channel laptop memory. Ripley's Believe It or Not just happened. Believe it. Let's move on to some real world performance, casual and gaming. Let's start with something you'll be doing pretty often with your laptop, booting it up and starting up software. We shut this bad boy down and then we start her back up, which is what we call a cold boot. The phrase was clearly coined in Southern Alberta, since that's how Burtons relate to a pair of cold boots. So the cold boot managed to get us into the user login screen in a mere 12 seconds. We logged in and restarted the computer, which is also known as a warm boot, or as I like to call it, cozy boot. From here, we were able to get into the login screen in an average between 20 to 25 seconds. While on a stable five gigahertz Wi-Fi connection, we were able to fully load Netflix and YouTube homepages within three to five seconds. We also made sure the websites were cached in our browser to just to be certain of the results were accurate. I find we need more hands-on examples and real-world testing when it comes to these types of product reviews. If you agree with me and the team with this fantastic approach, let us know in the comments below because we read every comment. And now to gaming. When it comes to laptop gaming, this tough laptop is considered an entry-level gaming machine. We had time to run a few of our favorite games and see if we can hit that sweet spot of 120 FPS per second to match up with 120 Hz per second. Overwatch. We were able to achieve an average of 89 frames per second on ultra settings at 120 Hz. We bumped it down to high to see what we can get and we got an average of 92 FPS. Next, we dived into Apex Legends, where we achieved an average of 80 FPS on high and 89 on low. We achieved over 60 frames per second. However, if you want to achieve that silky smooth 120 FPS to match the silky smooth 120 Hz refresh rate, you may want to consider a secondary RAM stick to get dual channel RAM. Something to consider when looking at gaming laptops. Hey guys, don't forget to check out our dual RAM video. 
This way, you can achieve that near godly 120 FPS consistently. But speaking of consistent, I've been consistently impressed with the battery performance and the included power adapter. I know it's strange to be impressed by a power adapter, but I am. It's not too big or heavy. At 416 grams or 0.9 pounds for your American friends, it manages to fully charge this laptop in an hour and a half from a completely dead battery. Not bad considering all most laptops in this range quite a bit slower. We did a couple of real world tests to see how long the battery life itself would last. First, we wanted to know how video playback would affect battery life. We were again on our five gigahertz wireless network. We wired up some decent headphones playing at 70% volume, resulting in 55 to 80 decibels, which by the way is absolutely healthy and safe listening range. Talk to your doctor. So we popped up some Netflix and put on Lord of the Rings on loop because that makes more sense than bringing Game of Thrones on or something. I mean, who watches that? Because we all know how it ended. Not worth it. Okay, to be honest, I thought that battery would die before the end of moving, just like Sean Bean. However, at 50% screen brightness, and no keyboard and backlight, we managed to get four hours and 28 minutes out of the tough laptop before it died. Unlike Sean Bean dying at two hours, 43 minutes and 41 seconds in the movie at the hands of the Savage Alerts, commander of the Arakai. Read it, it's in the book. Anyways, at 100% brightness, do you think we ended up with half the battery life? Pause. It's like the part in like Door of the Explorer where we pause before them to kind of answer. <laughs> Nope, not even close. In fact, we managed to get four hours and eight minutes of Frodo Baggins before the battery was cast into the fire. Please do not throw your batteries in the fire. While streaming Netflix, it turns out the GTX 1650 was not under load whatsoever. Instead, 100% of the graphical data was sent only to the integrated Vega 10. Clearly, it handles streaming with no issues. On to design and portability. I mentioned earlier that if you're looking for an ultra portable laptop, then you'll have to look elsewhere. This laptop comes in it. 2149 grams or 4.73 pounds. This is about the average weight for a 15.6 inch laptop in this category. Overall build and materials are built with reinforced plastic. It's comfortably rigid with minimal flex warping. During our test, it fared well against aggressive use, so it didn't raise any concerns. In fact, Asus decided to go as far as implementing military grade testing to ensure it's capable of handling daily shock and vibration, extreme temperatures, humidity and altitude, and lastly, prolonged solar radiation. After filling the laptop and using it casually, I do have to agree with its top build quality. Now, let's take a peek at the trackpad. It's completely flush with the palm rest assembly. Both left and right click buttons are built into trackpad, resulting in a smooth flush design, which is quite similar to what's found on the MacBook product. Who wrote this? Oh, the new guy. Well, tell me eat oranges in this studio. During our testing, the trackpad performed very well and multi-touch functions works without any hiccups. The keyboard feels like a standard membrane laptop keyboard. It's evenly backlit with fully customizable RGB keys. If you're a fan of the chicle keys, you'll appreciate the design choice here. Now, a few of you who are considering your next laptop purchase may be wondering, is this tough? Or a Roggen savior? Well, let's break it down a bit, why don't we? The Asus Tough FX505DT accomplished something most of the ROG laptops don't. What I'm talking about is a balanced laptop with features that benefit a large audience. Now there's nothing at all wrong with the Asus ROG products. However, they are more focused on higher end gaming performance and enthusiasts. This typically results in bigger and heavier laptops with the exception given to their Zephyrus laptops. The good news is that the Asus Tough laptop can be a first step towards the ROG laptops if gaming high performance is where you eventually want to be, but ultimate boils down to what unique needs you have. We currently list the Asus Tough FX505DT at $1199.99 Canadian, which is right in the mid price range bracket. After everything we've covered, I do have a quick conclusion for you. This laptop hits a sweet spot for a large audience, students, casual users who may occasionally game, including those who may want a desktop replacement, and even business users who don't travel too often. So if you fall into those categories and considering a new laptop, I'd recommend checking this one out at your friendly neighborhood member express. You know the drill. Don't forget to hit that sub button and ring that bell so you never miss a video. Follow us on social media. Facebook and Twitter are the same. Memory Express. Instagram is official Memory Express. Ooh, what's this? It's June already. That means someone won the Fractal Design case and some lovely fans. And they won with a slapping and a woo. They, they won by slapping and a woo. There you go. Adam, congrats. Ooh, ooh. The month of June MAXP is 
Cooler Master 650 watt PSU along with a Hyper 212 cooler. So you can finally be a Cooler Master. Hit us up with some woos in the comments below, some ease, you know the drill. Comment on all the videos for the month of June and you too can join the cool club. I'm the president. <laughs> I'm not. God, I got fired for being a president. At 50% screen brightness and no keyboard backlight, we managed to get... What did we manage to get? <laughs> Eagle here. Uh, what did we manage to get? Uh, this is Blue Squadron Leader. Uh, we're not too sure. Sounds really good. Hello, comrade. It's Yellow Dog. We have no idea what you got. <laughs> Hello there, gentlemen. It's me, Governor Green. Uh, and you appear to get some battery life. We're not too sure. Get, uh, get some dummy thick in there. <laughs> Colonel. <laughs> we're not too sure what we got. But I'm too dummy. <laughs> to get this battery life. <laughs>